Are you a fan of big creatures, but don't want to pay full price? I mean, 8 mana for a finisher in this economy? Then Reanimator might be for you. This is a strategy where you get to jam most of your favorite huge beaters while paying discount mana costs. In this video, I'll go over the pros and cons of Reanimator, how to play it, beat it, build it, and the monetary costs. But before all of that, if you want to see more archetype breakdowns like this, consider subscribing and checking out some of my playlists. Okay, so you want to build a Reanimator deck. Where do you start? Well, most of the time, you're going to want to be in black. Many of the best Reanimator cards are in the black color pie. There are ways to build in other colors, which I'll get into later. Let's look at some of the best reanimation cards. We have the titular reanimate and animate dead. Both of these will take a creature out of a graveyard and put it into play. So the idea is you have a big creature, like Archon of Cruelty, for example, in your graveyard. And then for just one or two mana, you can put it into play, giving you a big creature for much less mana. Now the trick to this is getting the big creature into the graveyard in the first place. So you really want three elements to any reanimation deck. The reanimation spells, the reanimation targets, and stuff to fill your graveyard. Cards like Entomb or Buried Alive are great to put your best reanimation targets into the bin. But this is also kind of the problem with reanimator. Sometimes you sort of just draw the wrong half of your deck. If your hand is full of reanimation spells and reanimation targets, then you kind of don't do anything because it's stuck in your hand. And that's why you really want to have a mix of these three pieces. Although I would generally say you want to go lighter on the big creatures since you don't actually want to draw them, but you need like a good split of reanimation spells and stuff to put things in the graveyard. Okay, so we've seen some of the basic cards for a black base reanimation deck. And although you can totally stay in mono black if you want and build an excellent deck, adding a color though can be really useful. Mostly, it opens up new reanimation targets. If you go white, you get access to Avacyn, which can be really difficult to beat if you get her out early. Splashing blue gives you Jink Taxis. The first two versions of him are some of the best reanimation targets out there. Green has no shortage of big creatures that are excellent to reanimate. Now, if you splash red, there are some decent reanimation targets that you get access to. Not as good as blue or green or white, in my opinion, but red does give you access to some other stuff that I think is really good. Which brings me to the next section, looting effects are really great for any reanimator deck. Cards like Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion are perfect. Being able to churn through your deck and dump the big creatures that get clogged up in your hand while digging for reanimation spells is amazing. Being able to discard your bomb and draw into a reanimate is basically like drawing two cards there. Wheel effects are also great to fill up your graveyard, which red has plenty of, although blue has its fair share as well. Blue and red looting effects make excellent pairings with black, and if you wanted to go Grixis, that would be pretty sweet. If we're splashing blue as well, I want to shout out Cataract Leviathan, which bounces basically everything, so if you reanimate it with an enchantment that needs to stay in play for the creature to stay in play, like Necromancy, or Dance of the Dead, then when you reanimate the Cataract of Leviathan, it'll bounce those to your hand, so it dies. Then next turn you can replay them to put the Leviathan back in play to bounce everything again and again and stall out for quite a while. It's a really powerful synergy. The green splash is not as good at looting as blue or red, but it does have good self mill. Cards like Mulch and Seder Wayfinder are really great for putting your reanimation targets in the graveyard, although they're not great for actually getting the reanimation spells to your hand. Although in green, you do have better ramp, so you might be able to just more easily ramp into your threats than you could in a Demir or Arakdos reanimation deck. White doesn't really give you much looting or self mill, but I do think it is one of the better colors to pair with your black reanimation package. Because of, look, most of the weaknesses of reanimator decks are artifacts and enchantments. Cards like Rest in Peace or Soul Guide Lantern can absolutely hose you. There are also creatures that can slow you down, but creatures are very easy to remove, especially in black. But if you're in mono black, getting rid of enchantments and artifacts is pretty tough, which is why white can be a great addition to your deck. It gives you some better non-creature removal. Same goes for green. The artifact and enchantment removal in green is a great addition. Demir at least gets counter spells to help you stop those enchantments, but once it's in play, it's kind of annoying to get rid of, so you need to like bounce it and then counter it on the way down. 
If you insist on playing Rakdos or Mono Black and you are struggling with enchantment removal, Invasion of Ravnica or Meteor Golem are ways to get rid of those pesky enchantments. Bonus points for the Golem because you can reanimate it later in the game as well. So how powerful is a reanimator deck in Commander? Well, honestly, it can vary a lot. Now I know adding fast mana and rituals can really crank up the power of your deck, but a lot of it is in the reanimation targets you choose. There's a massive difference between reanimating an Inkwell on turn two and a Jinka Texas on turn two, which is actually a good thing. Power level is something you often would want to change from player to player. You might want a high power deck or a low power mid power deck. So when the power of your reanimation deck comes down to just a few cards, you can easily adjust it. Here's a little mini breakdown of what some high, mid, and low power reanimation targets are. Up at the high tier, we have cards that either draw a lot of cards, like Villas or Consecrated Sphinx, or cards that will immediately, slash at the end of your end step, do something big, Jinka Taxis, or Sire of Insanity, or cards that shut your opponents down. Things like Vornclex, or an early Terastodon to blow up lands. And for high power playgroups, you might also want to reanimate combo pieces. This can really boost the power of your deck a lot. Victimize is a great way to get an A plus B combo going, and Necrotic Ooze can be a combo piece in the right build. Mid tier reanimation targets are stuff that are powerful but either need a little bit more setup, require you to untap, or don't set your opponents back so far. Think Itali or maybe the original Shieldred. These two are great. And when it gets back to your turn, they can be really powerful. But they kind of fold to removal. It's not like a Jinka Taxis that just shuts your opponent out of the game as soon as it gets to their end step or draws you seven cards basically immediately. Other mid-tier creatures are stuff that's difficult to deal with, especially early. Inkwell Leviathan does big damage while dodging spot removal. Zatalpa Primal Dawn can be a menace to deal with early game, playing offense and defense so well with all those keywords. As for low power, reanimation targets, I would generally say stuff that's just big. Lord of Extinction can be a massive creature early on if you are milling yourself, but without any keywords it mostly just gets like chump blocked by tokens or dorks. It can be fun if you fling it at your opponents though. A lot of the blue leviathans like Shipbreaker Kraken or Lorthos are fun giant creatures, but not super powerful. If your goal was to make a lower power reanimator deck, this could be the way to go. Okay, I mentioned at the start that you don't need to be in black, and that's true, there are a few other ways you can get around it. White actually has some reanimation effects, late to dinner, resurrection, breath of life, and even commanders like Rhea Dawnbringer. Now these aren't super good reanimation effects because mostly they're like 4 mana or more, which makes them a tad jank or just lower power, but it is still doable. And white does have a lot of big creatures you can reanimate. Blue-white isn't bad either because you get some of the big leviathan targets or some of the best reanimation targets with Jinkataxis, and you get the looting effects to help you put them in the bin, plus tutors to find your lower amount of reanimation spells. Azorius reanimation is totally doable. Also gotta give a shout out to Mono Red Reanimator. Most of it is artifact based. Cards like Goblin Welder or Doretti Scraps Avant are great if you're trying to turn like a one mana artifact into a much bigger artifact. And cards like Felden of the Third Path can reanimate any creature, it doesn't even need to be an artifact. Plus with all the rummaging red can do, it's relatively easy to fill up your graveyard. I probably would lean onto artifacts if you want to go mono red reanimator because cards like Trash for Treasure and Goblin Welder are just so good. So how expensive is a reanimator deck? Some of the staple cards like Reanimate itself and Necromancy can be fairly expensive. Even in Tomb cost a couple of bucks these days. Plus many of the best reanimation targets are expensive too. Jin is five bucks, Villas is seven. Since these cards are some of the biggest, baddest creatures in the format, a lot of them are at least five bucks or more. If you wanna play a high power reanimator deck, you might need to shell out a few extra dollars. But almost all the lower power fifth and sixth best cards in reanimator are very cheap. Priest of Felrites, Victimize, Dread Return, Breath of Life are all less than a dollar. There are tons of ways to reanimate stuff for three or four mana that are really cheap. As for budget reanimation targets, the primordial cycle is pretty decent and all of them are inexpensive. Keep in mind the green one is banned. There are also tons of random dragons that make great targets like 
Bladewing Deathless Tyrant, or Piru the Volatile, which are also super cheap. If you are trying to build a mid to low power reanimation deck full of 7 and 8 drops and power them out with 4 cost reanimation spells, it's a lot of fun and can be super cheap to build. So some final thoughts on reanimator. This archetype I think is a lot of fun. It lets you slam a lot of your favorite big bad creatures early and do some cool things. The power level is also very adjustable. I've met a player who had a section of their binder dedicated to reanimation targets, and they would swap in and out different targets to adjust the power level of their deck for the table. This is also a great lesson for new players. A lot of people do not put Graveyard Hate in their decks. If you play a reanimation deck or you play against one, you will quickly learn how good a simple Tormod script can be. If you take anything away from this video, it's that you should be playing some Graveyard Hate in every single deck. Personally, I like reanimation a lot, as a really exciting archetype that can be taken many ways with lots of different color options. I like playing it as a tempo or mid rangey style deck. You stick an evasive creature down early and then use counter magic to protect it as you chip away at your opponents. If you have a reanimator deck, I'd love to hear all about it. Tell me what your favorite reanimation targets are in the comments below. Thank you so very much for watching, subscribe for more.